In this video, I'm going to take you inside my head and show you why I do what I do in a game of Madden 21. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Now, if you're new to the channel and you don't know what my channel is about, my channel is all about how to become a better Madden player in Madden 21 through tips and strategies and videos like this where I go into a complete game of Madden and break down exactly what my thought process is, what I'm thinking, and why I do what I do. So if you want to get better at this game, go ahead and hit the subscribe button at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. All right, guys, so I am running my kind of doing some reps right now honestly I'm, I'm kind of trying to prepare a little bit for the Madden Classic and I'm running my bunch tight end offense if you want to get that offense that link is in the description um, of this video but I believe it is the best offense right now in Madden 21 it has all the routes that you need it has the best glitchy uh, routes to glitch out match coverages and different things like that and it also is absolutely amazing in terms of pass protection I feel like it's one of the easiest offenses um, to get really really good pass protection from because of the tight end delay fade and because of the running back and because of the play actual blocking um, that is in this play PA cross so very effective offense and on defense I'll be running the nickel 335 wide defense which has been my favorite defense pretty much all season long 335 um, and 335 wide have been kind of staples of my my off or my defensive schemes and so if you haven't picked up those ebooks yet those are all in the description for you and if you want free samples to either my bunch offense or my 335 defense that is in the description as well this guy's running a very interesting defense. It's kind of like he's running some eight. I don't even quite know. I don't know if I've ever seen this defense yet this year. Um, and so one of the things that is interesting about the Madden Classic is it is very, very likely that you will play someone that you have never. Like you will, it is very likely that you will play something that you have never really seen all year. And he's doing this really nice little, um, really kind of almost. Um, heavy blitz look out of the dollar uh, which I have not seen really at all yet and so he's making some crazy adjustments doing some good stuff so you know really I've got to kind of lock in a little bit and just make sure that we're being effective and efficient on the offensive side of the ball set up some protections um, right here we're going to run a six-man protection scheme really a seven-man if you count the delay fade um, one of my favorite things about bunch tight end is I actually think it's very hard to consistently blitz it because of the fact that you get a lot of really glitchy blocking when you run play action plays I also think that um, you 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 really do a good job the, the the formation is not the only issue with it is that the running back is on the right side he's not on the left side but most of your plays really center around putting the tight end on a delay fade of some sort um, and so that is also something that I really really like about that now that out route right there I think is one of the most important routes in my offense and the reason why is because it forces my opponent to consistently play some type of um, you know underneath style of zone coverage they can't really just sit back and you know kind of let me do you know whatever uh, in that now right here we got a nice read over the middle to inside switch if his user is not in the middle of the field I will about 99% of the time try to hit that post route that is one of my favorite post routes in the entire game and now we're gonna be able to get on defense we're gonna be able to talk about some different concepts and different things we've been doing out of the match and one of my favorite adjustments out of cover four, um, I'm kind of trying to per perfect the match defense right now. I'm actually doing a lot, and I mean a lot, of labbing. Um, I feel like I have it almost where I want it um, as far as how it defends bunch and how it defends trips tight end. Um, now we just have, and even bunch tight end for that matter, uh, played a good game against Naomi last night on stream and was able to uh, have a really, really good defensive performance. So we'll see how it works here. This guy's going to – but I, I haven't really tested it a ton against the random formations, right? The random, random, random formations. That's what we're trying to figure out. So one of the things that I like to do out of this defense is I really, really like – um, I I think it makes a lot of sense, and there we go, nice pick off the top, and then you see that defense is just amazing. Um, one of the things that I do now that I never that I didn't do before, and one of the secrets that I think is really true to the cover four defense, is manning up that uh, blitzing linebacker out of the three three five wide. Now, I used to put him in his own. For the longest time, I was bluff blitzing him so that I could have an additional uh, three red hook on the field. Now what I'm doing is I'm actually um, 
manning him up on somebody. It could be the tight end. It could be the slot. It could be anything. And as you see, this guy's going to go ahead and quit out. We'll get into another game for you here. But I've been doing that man up assignment, and that has been huge for me. Um, it has really, really helped. Um, it has really, really helped me a lot on the defensive side of the ball. Just that one adjustment. And uh, sometimes it's literally one adjustment that can make or break your defense. And it can, it, it, I mean, and literally make or break um, your defense in, in terms of cover four quarters. Because cover four quarters does have some challenges um, just as far as, you know, there are some ways to bomb it. Um, if the if the if the offense knows what they're doing, so it's very important to get in the lab here today and just and just continue to work out the kinks of this before Saturday. We've got um, we've we've got today is Wednesday, February twenty fourth. So we have Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday morning to prepare. And so that's not a ton of I mean that's a ton of time on one hand and on the other hand it's not a ton of time so we're diving deep this week into the lab making sure that we not only do we know what we're doing as we head into the classic but also we have a good plan in case something goes wrong right what if something goes wrong what if what if this or that what if we go up against this scheme you know there's a, a one of the one of the schemes that a lot of people are starting to use that we might see in the classic as a quarterback run scheme from um the pistol, you know, that's that's been gaining some traction um, across the community. And so as you're preparing for a tournament like this where you just don't know what you're going to see, right, um, there's no tape. on the, the, What makes the Madden Classic to me so fun is you just never know. You, you don't know what you're going to see. You don't know what you're going to see on offense. You don't know what you're going to see on defense. You have a general idea of what the best players are going to do. But you don't. The middle is where it really does. Um, I mean, it, it's where there's a lot of room. You know what I mean? Like there, there's a lot of room for flexibility. Like you don't know. Like I'm, I'm telling you, in my games, I played things that were all over the map. I played um, several different types of of defensive schemes, several different types of offensive schemes. I did play some of the meta, right? Some of the bunch, some of the three three five, and I probably feel most comfortable playing those uh, formations just because I've seen them before. Right, but like this is this is something this is something that could happen in Madden Classic right here. Um, you're gonna play a game. You go up against somebody and they're running split slot and they just have this incredible um, you know run that's super hard to stop. That could be a thing. Um, and, and I'm telling you right now, that's those are some of the things that you. Re that's why you really want to go in and test some of your core adjustments out of your defense to make sure that you know it's actually a sound adjustments make sure that it's actually sound the way that you're going to run it um and obviously have a plan you know that that those are all really really important but anyways um we're going to dive into this uh game two here and one of the other things that i've been doing a lot is out of my cover four defense and see this is going to be my biggest issue in in, Ma in the madden um in the Madden class. I actually think I have a solution to that. I actually think I have a solution to that. I forgot about that. Um, when you run cover four quarters, I'll talk about this real quick. When you run cover four quarters, if you press coverage, and when I pinch my defense, it does press the coverage. I actually want the coverage pressed. But the problem with it is that the corners, the corners on the outside, um, they shade um, so that you can't press them because they'll sometimes get that what you just saw. So there's some little tricks and things that you have to kind of do to kind of deal with that. You know, for example, you might shade over top, but the problem with shading over top is it cancels out the matching rules um, down below the defense. So the, the quarter zone or the, the underneath zones don't match on them as well as they normally would. And so then you can get burned by, you know, crossing routes and slant routes a lot more than you would if you were running just traditional quarters. So, um, you know, there's some stuff we have to work out as far as the streaks go. Uh, but that's, that's like, uh, there's a couple of things we can try that I think can really deal with that. But anyway, it looks like this guy's actually running a very similar defense. He looks like he's running this, um, this dollar, and that's a little bit of a laser right there from from Rogers. One of the things that I'm trying to get better at um, on my my end of things is pass protection. Those are like little bitty things that doesn't seem like it means it matters a lot, but pass protection for me is one of the areas that I'm not super great at. I don't know, you know, I I don't know all the blocking schemes. Um, that's that's something that I need to improve on. And so before Saturday. 
um, I need to make sure that I'm locking in and that I am I'm being very um, sharp to do that. Now I am working on a little bit of a red zone scheme and in the Madden I just personally don't really like to throw the ball when I get down inside the eight yard line. I've been working on a scheme that is supposed to be very very effective for um, you know really the eight yard line to about the goal line. You know I feel really good on the goal line, but you see right there like I'm, I'm able to get stopped running the stretch. Um, and so, you know, I've been kind of just testing some different runs, testing some different schemes out. Um, one of the things that, um, and as you see there, we get blown up again. So now I'm in third down and long. And now, you know, you pretty much, you don't have to pass, but you kind of do um, if you want to be able to get in here. So, you know, this is kind of the big issue of my off. The, the one thing, which I think if any Madden player was honest with you right now, everyone is struck. I don't know of a Madden player that has an elite red zone scheme. And I actually think that's going to be critical. I mean, I remember when Problem Right um, won the Madden Challenge, and it was on head-to-head -head teams. Um, and, and basically, the reason it is significant is because he, this was back in Madden, I think, 13. He came to the, he came to the party with the best red zone or goal line and two-point conversion play all year. It's a, literally a glitch play almost, very hard to stop. And it literally won him uh, thousands and thousands of dollars. So um, that's kind of the approach that I'm going to be taking um, over the course. Once I get this cover four quarters defense where I want it to be um, as my base and then I can get a, maybe a little bit better, um, and then we're going to dive deep into the red zone, both on offense and on defense, because I don't feel that great in that red area. Uh, really from really from the about the 15-yard line and in for uh, defense, and about the 10-yard line and in for offense, they, those are the big areas that give me some trouble. So here we're just going to move him back manually. And this little power O is his thing. He's going to come out and do this. But I have seen, I mean, and I, I was talking with some people, I think it was in the Discord, which if you haven't joined the Discord, uh, that link is in the description. But basically what we were talking about was essentially um, some $1.326 stuff that is kind of surfacing as of late, which is, I'm surprised by because um, dollar is not, not the best, like, it's not the best, but it's just... It's just a different, um, you don't see that a lot. So that, that could be something as well. I know we've got a couple people uh, that have been working on that. Now, here's a little trick that I'm going to use. Um, I'm going to put the cover three cloud in my audibles, and I'm going to come out in, uh, come out and cover two man to get the press. You see here on the outside, they're pressed now. And then I'm going to audible right here, and now you see they move. And there's, that's, that's, see, this is, this is why I like the 335 wide so much. The run D from it is is really really good. Um, now right here, we're gonna do that. Come through. There we go. And now we got him in a fourth down situation. One of the things I've learned about cover four quarters, we're talking about this a little bit, is that you don't have to have the three wreck on the field. I used to be a big stickler for you always want to have a three wreck. You always want to have a three wreck. You always want to have a three wreck. You actually don't have to have one with this specific defense. Um, and just the way it works. Now, sometimes you do, depending on obviously what they're running, but you don't always have to have that. So that's something also that I think is super important to understand. Um, and he hits me in the flat again. I don't like that. I don't like that he's able to hit me in the flat on that. Um, to me, that's a big, 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 big problem if he's going to be able to hit me that consistently. Here we're going to try something a little bit. Um, yep, here we go. So this right here is a little bit of an adjustment, and he does run it. But this is the adjustment that I think I'm going to start doing out of this cover four quarters um, to help with the you know the man problem or the problem of the shading. And as you can see there, it did work. I just didn't get my my adjustments off. So this what basically what I'm going to do out of cover four quarters is I'm going to shade coverage over top. But then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put seam flats on the field this guy is just kind of being a, a little bit of a goon with a quick snap power row every play but um what that's going to do is the seam flats they're not uh, they're not the same as quarter flats by any means and so i got that's one of the big things that i got to test um 
you know, of course, any quick snap inside zone, throw your little crossing route. Yep, come on, buddy. This guy is being a goon. Um, and this is why another thing that you have to understand when you're playing a game of Madden, part of this is this is definitely preparation for the classic. That's why I'm not just running, you know, man coverage on him. Because man coverage would probably bag this entire offense, right? It, it would probably take away the majority of what he's trying to do offensively. But um, when you're preparation, you know, when you're preparing, you know, obviously you're trying to, um, you know, you're just trying to make sure that you're good. So anyway, here this the quick flat. So I don't know why that quick flat is so open. That's that's like a bad. That's, that's not great for me. I might need to just man him up on that side, but. Maybe that's the adjustment up there. The only problem is I really like like the the theme here is I always like to man up either the slot or the outside receiver on the on the quarters or on the on that linebacker side. I don't like to man up the tight end or the running back anymore, but you can definitely do that, um, and it could be very effective. So offensively, we just got to keep scoring. I guess his kicker is number sixteen. That's crazy. You don't see a lot of kickers with that number. But I'll be interested to see if he sticks with this dollar three two six. And I can't remember how we scored on him. I think we I don't even remember. And that's see, and that's what I'm talking about. I gotta get better at that. I I sometimes forget to I sometimes forget to um to run the double team on that on that tight end side there. Uh, he does have Khalil Mack, so we got to be a little bit careful of that. But right here. And that right there is like a secret. And I mean, like by secret, it's not really a secret. But people forget how good the option route is. This was a route that we were using earlier in the year from Gun Spread uh, with the running back. Option routes are super, super effective. Um, and I mean super, um, super effective. There, Khalil Mack gets an instant shed, and I'm going to have to adjust to that a little bit. I'm going to have to put David Bakhtiari on that side so I don't get shamed anymore by uh, Khalil Mack. Coming, coming completely free. That's a snap just because of his abilities. And let's see here. Second and four. A lot of things you can do in this situation. I think what we're going to do is we're just going to run PA boot over. And there's that double team right there on Khalil Mack to make sure. So hopefully he should be able to get out of the pocket here just fine. Roll out. And I've been having a lot of problems on the sideline with these catches. Um, so much so that I'm, I've actually thought about... I don't. I don't know. I. I, I don't know how to. I don't know. I've had a lot of issues. A uh, lot of issues within the last probably week. Uh, those sideline routes just not getting their feet in. Um, and I don't know if I'm the only one having issues with that. But anyway, there's a delay fade doing its thing, and we're gonna get our first down. This offense is really hard to stop, um, in my opinion. Just because the delay fade does so much for it. Now you notice here he's moving his guy. So I move my guy. Now he moves his guy. Um, it's actually smart by him as he does get him to light up there. Uh, but Devontae Adams, and you see that out route is so important. If you can consistently hit the out route and force them to have to play hard flats, it's really a, a big deal because a lot of people don't want to play hard flats. I personally don't want to play hard flats, right? I want to be able to play, you know, out routes and corners. So... Those quick outs are super, super important from that bunch set. All right, so um, so he's going to come back on, on the offense side of the ball. Obviously running that split slot scheme. Um, and so we've got to figure that out a little bit. So we know inside zone could be a possibility. We also know that um, we also know that the streak over the top. Um, and we're going to man up that running back this time and just kind of see how that does there we'll take that we'll go pick that ourselves and that was I mean the match coverage should have played that a little better than it did but it was a double move so we ended up just being in that vicinity that's one of the issues with the split slot in my opinion is you don't like a good user should be able to take that away 
And that was a great shed by Khalil Mack. And uh, we'll see here. This guy's actually being – this guy's doing kind of what I always say I want to do with Zadarius Smith, but I never do it. He's moving him around, right? He's So on one play, Khalil Mack could be on the left side, and then on the next play, Khalil Mack's on the right side, and you don't know that – you know what I mean? Like you don't have the, uh, the deal here. But here, this is a nice little dot. Uh, I don't know if he ran cover three – with an outside quarter on the left side to try to handle that a little bit better on that left side. But that that route right there, that streak is super, super underrated. Um, bunch tight end just because of the alignment of the formation, it just it gives some issues. Um, it gives some issues to cover three still. You can still one play cover three relatively easily out of the bunch tight end. Um, not that and here's the deal. When you play in the when you're playing like the best of the best you're not going to just get stock cover three. I mean, very rarely will you get stock cover three. You're going to get cover three with a deep half or with a something, right? So you can't just rely on one play touchdowns. You have to rely on reads and processes and systems. And that, I think, is the biggest difference when you make the jump, um, when, when you jump from just, you know, practice mode to actually jumping into a game and playing. So right here, we've got the seam flag. Seam, seam flats off. There's the run. Could have told you that was happening because um, he just he's not going to want to throw it now. Let's see here. He's got that. Throws it right to me again. That triple coverage and we block it. So he's running. I, I don't know what the play is that he's running, but it's actually a really, really good play from this formation. Um, let's see here if the seam flat... Seam flat still leaves that flat unguarded. That's crazy. So every formation has its player. I've noticed out of cover four quarters. Every form like if you run cover four quarters a lot, you'll notice that every formation has um, its player that you want to man up. Every single one. Um, and it man, that's that's crazy that those flat routes are getting so open. Um, every formation has Every every formation has its has its has its one little thing, um, so it looks like for this one, we need to man up that guy right there. We're gonna come over here and take that away, and that was a good read. I think that's a C route. I think that's a C route, but it's doing a really good job. Um, Yeah, and that time we manned him up. There you go. Yep. So that time we manned up the linebacker onto the the, the backfield, um, the backfield guy uh, right here. Hope he doesn't quit. And he does, of course. He only has one play. I don't know how that's not a pick. And I don't know how that's not a pick. Man. Good read. So he's he I mean he literally just ran oh uh, man, this offense is frustrating. It's crazy how good this offense is. Like not even good, but just like I mean, we got our interception. I can't remember, I think we kicked it. I think we get ball at half. So we have two plays basically. Um if we could get into field goal range, that would be huge. I don't think we can. Realistically, I think we only have one play. Um, we might have two. I mean, we only have, like, one. Like, we have to get, we'd have to get into field goal range on this play is what I'm saying. So, honestly, I think P.A. Boot Over is probably your best call. Like, the only thing is I would probably take Austin and I would streak him or slant him. We'll see here. This is just in standard man coverage. Oh, yeah. Five, four, three, two. So we get one more play. I'm going to try this. I don't know if it'll work or not. We're going to try it. Nope. 
No. Good defense. All right, so we're going to go in a half tied, but I think we get the ball. We did get that pick. So I think we, we should get the football. Yeah, we do. Watch for an onside kick here. Um. Man, so he had the so he had the one play touchdown over the top of the press, and then I can't remember the other way he scored. And then that last drive, it felt like we had him probably multiple times. Should have picks, but where it wasn't able to come through. I'm just surprised that the running backs are getting so easily open on that defense. So we're definitely gonna have to lock in here a little bit. Looks like he's gonna go to two four five. Um, double A gap. I would bet you money he's probably going to send the house here, but I still like the double team. And right there, I love that right there, that little stick work. I think that's a really, really good adjustment. When people try to when people try to contain rush you, what they're going to do is they're going to leave the middle of the field wide open. Um, so they're going to be crashing their line out and all that stuff. So it's going to leave the middle of the field wide open. You could easily just, you know, kind of run in between um, the tackles there, if you, you know, again, as long as you don't get a crazy shed or something. Um, now, right here, he is showing pressure. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to try and hope that Khalil Mack doesn't kill me here. And there's that out route once again, like I'm telling you. If they sit on the corner, you can take the out route. But you notice, again, he's doing a really, really good job of consistently moving Khalil Mack around. So it, it, one of the biggest things is it prevents me from going no huddle. I like to go no huddle. I like to play fast. And um, not able to do that as much with Khalil Mack constantly being shifted around from side to side. Um, I think that's a really good strategy by him. It looks like here he's going to some 3 3 5 wide. Probably a blitz off the edge. Yep, I'm going to sit in the pocket here. And I need my running back to do a better job on that. I, I should not have slid right i should have slid left we're gonna go no huddle and try to just catch him here we got a nice one-on-one -on -one. and there's our crosser and i need that to be a catch i don't see that's what i'm saying i i, I think like i think that the reason that i'm not catching those lately is because i'm hitting catch too early i think that's what's happening so right here, and then just right there. If I so I think I think that's probably on me, um, because I'm just like, it's like I get open and then I'm just dra I'm just holding it. You know, I I probably need to be a little bit better about that. So, so anyway, hopefully that'll fix it because that's that's been killing me lately. I'm I'm just not been doing a good job of that, and that's good. Click on. Now, see here, this again, here we are again, inside the 10 yard line. What do you call? One of the things that I actually, I used to, I used to do this, I think in Madden 13. One of the things I used to do is call a little screen, right? They're not expecting it. Um, you can get kind of sticky with it. And as you can see there, it works out for us. We're able to get the touchdown. Now, if you play a really good player, I don't know if you'd be able to get away with that, but, um, but on that, you know, maybe, maybe once or twice a game, you might be able to get away with that. Slip screens are kind of, I think slip screens are underrated a little bit. Because I struggle, like I personally struggle to stop, to stop slip screens consistently. Alright, so defensively, if he scores on this drive, we might have to shift out of the, out of the cover four quarters. But what we're going to probably try to do right now, because of his routes, and because of the way that he's running his routes, um, he's basically running two flat routes, and then a C route, and a streak, and a post. I'm almost positive that's what he's doing. So obviously zone drops would work against that. Um, but what I want to see is if we can get these zones to play right. Like, that route is an issue. That route on the left side there, we played that okay. So we got that that guy manned up, and we're we're gonna sit here, sit here, sit here, and the running back got us. Okay, good job. So I th I, th I don't know what that running back's on, but I think what we're gonna do is probably 
Instead of having a three red cook, we'll do that. We'll just man up. We'll just man up both running backs, and then we'll just take care of the C route in the middle of the field. So that's probably what we'll do here. Um, so Darius Smith needs to be on the right. Okay, perfect. There we go. And that's okay. That's not bad. It's not bad defense. Um, that C route is hard. That C route does do is doing a good job. So really, what it's going to come down to, I think, it's going to be coming down to us using the C route and then letting the match coverage take the post route. Obviously, we could. I mean, there's some other things we could do as well. But if we wanted to do it out of quarters, it looks like this is what we're going to have to do. And of course, we're just going to quick snap a power O, and we weren't ready for that. And that's where, like, when when people can get you to think, you know, then they can pop you with like basic, basic stuff. Like right here, we're going to be all over that. And Gary did not do his job. Cohen torched him. I think he must have been on a check release or something. So second and three here. Take that away. Man, he's killing me. Wow. Wow. That's a check release. That's a check release route that's killing me. And I did do a video on those. I mean, those are good. So we got to keep scoring. Um, okay, so he did score on this drive. So next drive, we're just going to run man coverage and see if we can just bag it. I think we can, honestly. I mean, there's nothing really – nothing that's going to kill man. I mean, the post route, we can basically – I mean, we can, we can pretty much – user that or drop a zone over there um so it's a good play though it's a, it's a, definitely a good play surprise at cover four so, so 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 cover four is good against so much you know um you know sometimes you go up against someone i'm going to try one other adjustment out of cover four on the next drive and if that doesn't work we'll definitely um just switch to man coverage i think man coverage could completely take that away but uh, obviously the power O, he'll mix in the power O, which is nice. Um, you know, it just gives you stuff to think about. See here, once again, he's he's moved Khalil Mag, so that now I have to, you know, basically go through um, and adjust here. Um, this might be a pick. Oh, what a dot! Okay, that's that's that was that was close. That was close. That was really really close. But it was actually, I mean, I don't know if that's you know. I don't know how consistent that read really is. Um, I I feel like I always get that if I do the swerve catch, it just drops it right over the top of him like that. They almost always don't be able to. They're almost always not able to pick that off if they if they're coming from the whole all all the way from the opposite end of the defense. Um, but I don't know if I'm right on that or not. That's just something that that's just something that's worked well for me. So. We got 356 left. I'm going to try one last adjustment out of the cover four quarters. And if that doesn't work, um, I mean, obviously, I just, I mean, you could do so many things on defense. But I'm going to try this, maybe two. I might try two left, two final adjustments. But anyway, no, uh, no, 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 no. Power O again. It's like he's almost on an autopilot. Like he's always going to run power O when he comes out first play. Get to a hash. There. Let's see how this does. There we go. Yep. Yep. See, for two back, I'm just surprised at how poorly, and maybe it's just because they're running backs, but I was just surprised at how poorly they actually, like the quarter flats don't play the flat. Um, on the running back side. So what we need to do is essentially create a, this is kind of crazy that we're going to say this, but we're going to create a cover four quarters um, Mabel. That's what we're going to have to do, I think. Because that C route, and then we're just going to have to use the in C, inside break of the C route. That C route's good, man. I think people, the, the problem with the C route is it's really, really easy 
uh, to user. That's that's to me the problem with it. But here we go. We got the seam flat, we got a hard flat, and we have the quarters um, over the middle of the field. Obviously, we could probably you know another thing that we could do actually. We're gonna we're gonna shift here. We're gonna run a roll coverage, um, and this is why I like cover four so much. So you could do this out of anything really, but this is cover two sync, right? And there we go. That should be bagged. Um, but you can you can you can go into these cover six matches and things like that out of cover four quarters too. So. I'd be shocked if he quits here. I don't think I don't think that's the right move. He's in the game, so I don't think he'll quit. I think he's checking something as a depth chart or doing whatever. Maybe sending me a message saying he hates me. I don't know. But not, the beauty of cover for quarters is you can auto you can always adjust it really really well. So we know that on the left side it's going to play a certain way. On the you know it's te technically I don't think split slot is trips. I don't think that's technically uh, trips. I think it's technically just kind of a standard formation. It might be trips. Technically, it is trips to me because you have three threats on the right and, and only. But but because they're in the backfield, I think it's causing some issues uh, with the match with the match coverage. So we're gonna go with this soft squat and see how that see how that plays it. There we go. That's much better. That's much better defensively. That soft squad is like a another thing that I really really like is I love this cover. Um, it's like a cover um, for Mabel coverage almost. If you take a look here, but again we're gonna drop that deep deep inside guy. Now we got that quarter flat over there on the left side. So if he does run an out route, he probably has it. But and we could run a middle third, but I just want to watch how that quarter that inside quarter matches onto him. And see there he takes that away. C route's taken away. He's got a scramble. We're gonna go get him. And that's ball game, or that's not I me. Mean, that's close to ball game right there. But that, that's that's a little adjustment out of cover four quarters that I actually really like to do, and I don't do it nowhere near as much as I probably should. But when people are running flooding concepts on it, right? They're just flooding zones. That cover six style um, is a really, really, really good uh, play. So, anyways, GGs to this guy, YouTube Craxy or Crazy. Um, you know, I thought that offense was actually very interesting. I hadn't seen a whole lot of split slots, so it was good preparation. But at the end of the day, I think the cover six, the cover four um, rolled into a cover six, essentially, to the strong side. And I don't know if that's exact. I'm, I'm pretty sure, and I, I could be wrong on this, but I'm pretty sure that this is how a lot of the TCU team or um, Alabama teams can deal with these, you know, kind of flooding concepts is I'll call it, that's the whole purpose of a cover six is, is my point. Um, and I could be wrong on this, but again, um, this is what we're going to do. So again, cover six here, man this guy up so that you have no problem with your match. There we go. Bag it up. Yep. And it's completely boxed. So you take a look at that left side because he's not running trips. Um, yeah, let's see here. Quick snap. We'll take that away. He's going to throw the post, and that's triple covered, and that's GG's in the chat, man. Good game to this guy. But you see what I'm talking about? Like, if I were to just use her the 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 C route the entire, I, I probably would have, you know, really really done well. Um, but I was trying to see if the if the the matching um, defense would play it. Uh, it didn't, so. That's unfortunate. Um, that's a that's another play from Gun Bunch. Not very many people are running this bunch at this point in the season, but there is another Gun Bunch out of Atlanta, and I think it's out of New England. And I don't know what other formations have or what other books have it, but I know Atlanta has it. Um, and basically, what it is 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 it's a um, man. That's so bad. I gotta get that catch. Um, what what it is is it's a C route to the outside receiver. And so he kind of, for what whatever reason, and, and I noticed this in my in my tournament game, C routes can give the match coverage a little bit of trouble. Um, so you know that's that's one thing though. And here Khalil Max gonna go crazy, and that route right there is like super underrated. It's the 
block and release crossing route to the tight end. That route literally beats man about 90% of the time, at least in regs it does for me. Um, and so that's that's been another another really big one. But, but anyways, offense played pretty well. Um, he did some really interesting things defensively, so that was good by him. Defensively, we played, um, you know, pretty much as pretty much. Uh, I wouldn't say we played great, but we played good enough to win at the end. There, we made the adjustment we needed to make, and so you know. Anyways, if you want to get the offensive ebook, um, that link is in the description. If you want to get the defensive ebook, that link is in the description as well. If you want to get a free sample of either one of those guides, shoot me a text. My number is in the top left hand corner of your screen. I release new videos every single week to my text message members only my text message members receive these videos these are full schemes out of different formations that i've been testing out or labbing every week it's kind of like a inside the mind not inside the mind but inside the lab with me um we just lab for about an hour um and and talk through schematics and things like that so if you want to get that that's really good it's been helpful for a lot of people a lot of high level madden um, gets talked about in those videos but but anyways guys i want to thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video today i really hope that you enjoyed it and if you have any questions about the scheme hit me up in the uh, text messages again that is my personal cell phone number last thing i want to remind you about is our stream tonight at 10 p.m eastern and if you want to get any of the guides that you saw me running today uh, those links are available for you in the description